All right, 102 students. Uh, let me try another question here from, again, some uh, uh, a harder one here. Um, it's really any of these uh, open and standing waves, uh, the open uh, pipes with the standing waves is the uh, challenging one. Let me just read it here. It says, uh, how long is an open pipe organ that has a fundamental frequency of, and they give a frequency of 493? Well, well, let me start with the hard part here. Um, if you have a pipe that is open, and what's really meant by that is that it's opened on both ends, because it's always implied that one side is open, because the sound has to get out. All right, so if you're going to use uh, some kind of uh, piping, um, we call these sound tubes, to produce sound, uh, one side has to be opened. Now, the other side could be closed or open, and so that's why we have things called an open um, organ pipe or a closed organ pipe. But know this, that by default, one side is always open. You wouldn't have a closed closed. Um, the sound then would be produced inside and wouldn't have a chance to get, get out. So, unless there's a reason for it, but not for producing sound on the outside, but producing sound on the inside, then, then you might have a closed on both ends. But the idea here is we've indirectly implying one side is open and the other side is either open or closed. So we just say open. All right. So now that's important because then let me do a standing wave pattern. Um, and let me just go on for quite a distance here. Because this problem, like many other ones, like the string, and I think the string one is a little easier to see if I take a string and I tie it on one end and then stretch it and tie it on the other end. Because they're tied, you know that the two endpoints are nodes. And so whatever pattern that can be on here would, would, would have to be a node. And so if you kind of look at this, maybe you pick a node and another node, then you would say, okay, that's one hump. Or maybe you start here at this node and the ending node is here. So that would be two humps. And so you can run through the list of all the possibilities you could have that would have both ends at a node. Now, that doesn't really help for this problem. It just kind of sets up what I'm about to do for the open one because the open one I think is a little bit harder to see, but here the air can freely move. It's not restricted, and at this end the air can freely move. So what ends up happening is the air moves the best or the easiest. That's called an anti-node. And so maybe in a, a different color here I'll point out the anti-node. So this is the wave at one moment. Uh, a little bit later, this would move down to here. Uh, a little bit later, this would move to here. And a little bit later, it would be then at its maximum the other direction. So this point here is an anti-node. And what this is saying here is we would set up a standing wave pattern where one side is an anti-node, but so is the other. So if you look here and you draw from anti-node and then to the next anti-node, you might have a drawing that looks like here to here, anti-node to anti-node. Uh, of course, other possibilities is you start with the first anti-node here. There's an anti-node in the middle before you get to another anti-node, which is the end. And so something like that might be drawn in this pattern. And you see, if this is the, the, the length of the tube, and this one's a little bit harder to see, but I'm hoping you see this would be a whole wavelength. And this up here would be a half wavelength. Now, maybe it's easier to see when you come back up here, but from here to here is half a wave. And then to the next 
antinode is another half a wave. And the next antinode is another half a wave. So I like to say this, that the length of the tube here is a half a wavelength. Here, the length of the tube is two half wavelengths. Because if I continue on with this pattern, it could look something, there's a first antinode, second antinode, and then the end is the third antinode. Okay, so L here would be three half wavelengths. So you're beginning to see a pattern that would say the length of the tube would be some integer, let's say N, half wavelengths where n can be a number one or two or three or four dot dot dot. Now, that's making the problem a little more generalized than we have to do because they say this is the fundamental one. And the fundamental one is the first one, this one here, where n equals one. So knowing that, I could just write then that the length of the tube is a half wavelength. It's this scenario. So for this problem, they are telling me n equals 1 when they use that phrase with a fundamental frequency of. Okay, so our goal here is to find out this L, how long is the wavelength. And that thinking and discussion I just did is the hard part of this problem because now the, the easier part is to get its wavelength. And so remember that velocity is wavelength times frequency. So wavelength would be then velocity divided by frequency. So knowing that the speed of sound is about 340 Four forty-three, roughly at room temperature. Uh, they don't say that it's at room temperature, but know this: that that's kind of the default. If they if they don't say that it's at room temperature, kind of assume that. If they don't say it's in air, assume that. Well, this does say it's a pipe organ, so I think it's very reasonable to assume it's in the air. And again probably very reasonable to assume it's around room temperature. So taking the velocity to be 343, uh, dividing it by the frequency of the 493.88, uh, you get a wavelength of 0.69, and I'll call it a 4 meters. And so the length of the pipe is then half of that at 0.347 meters. Yay, so there's the problem.